Guys, it's that time of year. Barbell's hoodie deal is back. Now these sell out quickly. So make sure you get yours before it's too late. Here's the deal you don't want to miss. Get a free hoodie with any purchase where you spend $99 or more. These are my favorite hoodies. I have five of them in my closet right now. They are insanely soft and extremely comfortable. The fabric is breathable and has moisture wicking properties. So they're great to work out in. And with Barbell's Tailored Athletic Fit, you'll look good wearing them. Guys, I promise these will become your favorite go-to hoodies. Barbell Apparel's quality and construction is second to none. And it's backed with a 365-day guarantee. Wear it. Work in it. Live in it. If your clothing fails you in the first 365 days, Barbell will replace it. So head over to barbellapparel.com. Do it right now before the sale ends. Piera versus Adesanya. So there was this clip that came out on Instagram. It was on Alex Piera's Instagram. And apparently, Piera Adesanya Part 2 had just been completed. Piera's son is in the ring. And the young man who absolutely goes into the category of adorable, right? More than just cute. Like, this is, this is, you wish that this, your kid was this cute. Truly adorable. He's in the ring. Okay, I don't know the context of it. This is where the shot, called an establishment. This is where it opens. It opens to an Adesanya who has removed his gloves. That usually happens right when the match is over and prior to the official announcement. And your winner is, right? So moments after, the kid has a water bottle. He's standing upright. Kid hits himself in the head like that with a water bottle and topples over. Now, I guess that's a dig at Adesanya, or I guess that's a props to his dad. That's how that's to be interpreted. I'm not sure that was my interpretation. I think it was just a really cute kid who happened to do something that was funny. It, it doesn't truly matter. It's a thing, and it's going around. I think that Piera might be one of the more interesting personalities our sport has. He just refuses to let himself come out. I'm starting to think that because Piera has not missed yet. He's only taken five times up to bat. I've caught five Piera interviews, and now this little Instagram piece, I guess will go down as number six. I've seen them all, and I remember something about all of them. This guy has never bored me. This guy has never not been compelling. This guy has never failed to make me interested. He just doesn't go up there very often. I wish that he would start taking a, a, a few more swings. There was a picture. You want to talk about a picture being worth a thousand words. There's a picture of Piera. What's this guy's first name? Alex Piera? Alex? And he's going up. Uh, he's with uh, Dominic Reyes. Dominic Reyes is huge. Dominic Reyes is a 205 pounder all day long. He's six foot three. He's a big man. He's not cutting weight. Piera's not cutting weight. They're both working out, right? I mean, this is just what you ate. Piera was huge compared to Reyes. And the whole caption had to do with how much weight Piera had to lose. He's like 50 pounds overweight. This story came out two or three weeks ago, and he's still got a number of weeks until the fight, but he's just this massive guy. I find that interesting. That's my only point. I have no other point that I find this interesting. I find Piera versus Adesanya to be one of the great stories in one of the matchups that simply never happened. This has not happened, and please correct me. I liked 1993. I liked the concept of the mixing of martial arts. We're not calling it mixed martial arts, but it used to be the mixing, right? You're going to have a karate guy taking on a judo guy. You're going to have a wrestler taking on Muay Thai. And as we played that through, we had the evolution of the sport happen a little bit too fast because we didn't get all of those matchups. By example, it was very in fashion to take a great striker of some art and put him with a great grappler of a different art. The judo, the wrestling, the jujitsu, the catch wrestling, right? I mean, you just keep changing that name, but it was still grappler versus striker. I want to see striker versus striker. Personally, I wanted love, still to this day, to see a great taekwondo versus a great karate. That's interesting to me. I would love to see a great kickboxer versus a great boxer. That would be interesting to me. And but we never had time. We didn't get this worked through. So this really is a matchup. To have two kickboxing aces 
to have two Muay Thai stars to have two stand-up guys against each other. It really hasn't been done, including back to 1993. Now, the matches start to make themselves. You leave the tournament. If you guys know what I'm talking about in 1993 and you had the tournaments and the cream rises to the top and all these different things and you go to the super fight, you get into all this business, the strikers have never done that well. I mean, it wasn't as though Dana White or Joe Silva or Sean Shelby or Mick Maynard and company, it wasn't as though they didn't want to put two guys together. They never rose up. There was not two great strikers at the same time that rose up. And I made this comparison, and I had somebody try to smear my face in this, like the puppy that missed the paper, to tell me about Francis Ngannou and Surreal Gone. I like your point there. I actually am not going to fight back. However, we had seen enough from both of those guys. We knew the extreme couture. We knew about the training of Angano. We knew that it was very possible that those guys could get clinched up. Vinny Magaliesh was in the practice room just by example. And this was out on Instagram, and he's working with Francis and these different things. I mean, it was to the point that Surreal Gone went for a leg lock. We knew enough about it. We don't know anything about that with Pierre and Adesanya. I feel like this is very pure, and I feel like the stakes are much higher than people are aware. My partner Ryan tells me until he's blue in the face, if Adesanya loses this fight, is getting a rematch. And I'm saying, man, I'm not so quick with that. That is what the history of the sport would say when these great champions go down. But Piera has another tale to tell. This is part three. Those first two, you can sweep them if you want, or you can bring them to the forefront. And I don't know that we know until that bell goes off how Dana's going to play this. We don't know what footage and what rights Dana's got out and got. If he plans to make those first two a part of the story, he begins to tell us, and this looks as though part three, I, I, I don't think there is another road for Adesanya, which I think it makes it more interesting. And you know who wants me to be right? It's Adesanya. Adesanya doesn't want Ryan to be right. Adesanya wants all this. Adesanya goes out of his way to create pressure. Adesanya danced on the way to the ring one time. He came out as the undertaker another time. He's looking to build pressure. He's putting his focus and attention over here just to put more pressure. I am convinced I was the king of the middle I feel that. I feel it about myself. Whether, whether you're the two that agree with me or not, I was the king. I had no equal. There was nobody, not only that, that I couldn't beat, there was nobody that could even win around with me. I, that was true for a period of time. I feel as though I have the right to share an opinion within that weight class, and I am 100% confident in telling you Adesanya is the best. I think if I got Henderson aside and I got Anderson over here and I grab Michael Bisping, and we all had a little private talk that we would all come to the conclusion Adesanya is the best. I feel that that's the real truth, whether that was to come out publicly or not. Adesanya's got a problem. He's got a big problem on his hands. Got a big problem on his hands that guys like Glover Teixeira are vouching for. Guys like Lyota Machida are vouching for. Guys like Ed Soros are vouching for. Guys like Anderson Silva are speaking up and vouching for. And it's not as though Adesanya isesn't aware. Adesanya's not only been in there once, Adesanya's been in there twice. I'm very curious to things that perhaps you wouldn't identify. I'll give you a great example. When this fight rolls around, this is going to be big. The story to be told on this, and the story is going to be told by the masterful storyteller, Dana White. But when he's done, I'll be looking for small stuff. I'll be looking for at the weigh-ins. Who's going to look away from who? I'll be looking at for the fight introductions on fight night. Are they going to touch gloves? I'll be looking for how does Adesanya walk out? What level of focus and what level of respect and what level of understanding that I got one crack at this prick from my past who's been following me for a long time versus the way that he's approached other fights, where he puts his focus elsewhere, where he puts an entertainment aspect. I'll just be curious. Well, I won't judge him. I don't know that I have a prediction on how that will go. I will be curious. I think that these things are interesting. Here is a big guy. 
He's got to get down to that weight class. What does that do? And I don't know a lot about those first two fights. I begged you guys for info. And all I got in the comment section is, Chael, Google it. Chael, it's it's all I got, but I wanted some info. I don't know what year those fights were. I don't know how deep along both of those careers those fights were. I don't know if when they went off, on the night they went off, if they were main events, if they were big fights within that world. I just don't know some of these things. I don't know at what weight these fights were contested. There's a lot about those previous matches that I'm very interested in, not just the outcome. But I do think I'm right. I do think the house is on fire for Adesanya. I do not think my partner Ryan is correct. That if he loses, he just automatically gets a rematch. I don't, I don't know that this is the first time they're going out there. I don't know that. You guys will decide. I think this is the third time, and I think it's the final time. 